Last time we discussed sets, we discussed two different ways to write a set. One was called the set builder notation. And well, here's an example. This is set builder notation. We see x and z such that the absolute value of x is two. Now, these two are what I call the roster method where you just list the elements. This would be two and minus two. And just as a comment, and I made this last time, that if you list an element more than one time inside the brackets, it doesn't change the set. All three of these sets are the same. It's a set of two elements that contains two and minus two. Okay, now, today we are discuss discussing operations on sets, but before I do, let's ask, when do you know two sets are equal? Well, here we have some that are equal, but generally two sets A and B are equal provided they have the same elements. Now, we can interpret this in terms of what we discussed last time. Um, so another way to write this, in other words, and this is an important observation before we get started today, here, A is a subset of B and B is a subset of A. Because this says every element in A is an element of B, and this says every element of B is an element of A. And if you have both of these being the case, then this means that A and B are equal as sets right here, okay? Now, today we are discussing operations on sets. We will learn many. The first one I want to discuss is called the Cartesian product. And this involves ordered pairs. So what is an ordered pair? Well, an ordered pair is something like this, say x comma y. And I purposely put x and y because you're used to this. This is what you plot in, say, the xy plane. You have a point x comma y. This is an ordered pair. And, well, it's ordered, right? Because if you interchange the two, just think about a graph. Say we plot 3, 1, which is here. This is the point 3 comma 1. And if you interchange the two, this would be one comma three. They're not the same. So there's order here. This kind of bracket, there's order, unlike, well, this one, where there's no order, that is for a set. Okay, now, given sets A and B, we may define the Cartesian product Or you'll also see this sometimes called the cross product. This is A cross B. This is a new set, and this is all, say, A comma B, such that A is an element of A, and B is an element of B, okay? So in words, this is all ordered pairs. A cross B is all ordered pairs where the first element is a element of A, and the second coordinate, I should say, is an element of B, okay? Now, let's do some examples. Here are two sets, A and B. The cardinality of A is three, cardinality of B is two. Let's find A cross B, B cross A, and B cross B, okay? Well, A cross B, this has first coordinate from A, second coordinate from B. So this would, for instance, we have one, one, we have one, two, we have um, three, one, we have three, two, and then we have six, one, and six, two. Okay, this is A cross B. Now, B cross A, well, this time the first coordinates come from set B and the second coordinates come from set A. So this would be 1, 1, this would be um, 2, 1, this would be 1, 3, 2, 3, 1, 6, and 
two six. Finally, B cross B, this would be, now the first coordinate and the second coordinate, we take all possibilities, but they come from B. So we have one, one, we have one, two, we have two, one, and we have two, two. Okay, the first thing to notice, just staring at these, and this is an important observation, is that A cross B is not equal to B cross A. Why is that? Well, for example, A cross B has the element one comma two, it's right here, and that is not in B cross A, and there are more, right? Two one is not in A cross B, uh, in fact, the only element, just looking at the list, the only element that's in common to both is this one comma one, and besides that, there are no other elements that are the same. Okay, so definitely not equal, and this generally is the case, that A cross B is not always equal to B cross A. Now, what else do we see? I can make some more notes just about this example. Well, any of these, whether it's A cross B or B cross A or B cross B, this is a subset of if I took Z cross Z, right? Now, how could we depict this? And I'm going to draw a picture here. I will do A cross B because I wrote it, but we can depict A cross B graphically sitting inside Z cross Z, where, so we have one, two, three, four, five, six, A is one, three and six, and B is one and two, and then the points in A cross B are just the ordered pairs in the XY plane that you are used to. It would be here, 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 and here. And these are the exact points. So this here depicted as A cross B in the picture. It's the exact points that you see, right? We have one, 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 two, three, one, three, two, six, one, and six, two. It's graphed here, sitting inside Z cross Z. Or you could also say this is a subset of R cross R if you wanted to. There's some other things we could say. It's a subset of N cross N, for example. Now, looking at it like this uh, as points, we can think about cardinality here. What do we see? The cardinality is six of A cross B. And this equals the cardinality of A times cardinality of B. And this is not, um, ah, look right here, cardinality of A times cardinality of B. And this is not by chance. This happens anytime you have two finite sets A and B and you want the cardinality of A cross B. It is the cardinality of A times cardinality of B. And the reason, well, you can really think about it as being like kind of in a rectangle like this. Even if your sets don't naturally sit inside uh, the integers. For example, here we have C and D and neither of these sets sit inside the integers, so I wouldn't naturally put them on the grid that we're used to, but you can still, this still holds that the cardinality of C cross D will be, well, we have two things in C and we have four elements in D, we will get eight. And the reason, or one, one reason you can see this is I can arrange them in a grid. I would just have down here, for example, I could put five and I could put Q. And then here I have the set containing two. I have R, I have the empty set, and I have H. And then this would say, I put this as the first coordinate and this as the second. I put this one as the first coordinate and this as the second. I put this as the first coordinate, second, first coordinate, Second, you can see there is four of them, and then here come the other four. I have Q together here, Q with R, I have Q and the empty set, and I have Q and capital H. 
Okay, this is why this cardinality of A cross B multiplies like this. And all of these elements listed are the elements of C cross D. There's eight of them, right? Okay, well, let me make, or I'd like to ask you a question and then we will move on to some other operations on sets. This is actually very fascinating. So question, what is, let's take C cross the empty set. Okay, for this C, what would it be? Think about it. Well, how many elements does it have? And that will help us, right? C cross the empty set. It would say all first coordinates come from C here. All second coordinates come from the empty set. But how many elements would it have? Well, we know it's cardinality. This is um, the cardinality of C times the cardinality of the empty set. The empty set is the set with no elements. We would get zero. So what must it be? This must be the empty set because, as I mentioned last time, this is the only set with zero elements. Okay, so this, I like this example, thinking about the empty set. Now we will move on to some other operations. Now, what I want to talk about is three operations on sets. One is the union of A and B, the intersection of A and B, and the difference of A and B. And there's notation for each of these that you really need to have down. The notation for the union looks like this. It is a, well, it's a big U for union. And the intersection looks like this. This is an upside down uh, union sign. Finally, the difference, the difference is like this. It's just like the difference when you take numbers and subtract but that's what it looks like, a subtraction sign. Now, maybe I will define these with um, set builder notation. I'll start down here because I mentioned it's like subtracting and it really is. So this is all X such that X is in A and X is not in B. So in words, you start with the elements of A and you just remove the ones that happen to be in B, right? X is in A and X is not in B. You start with A, you remove the ones that are also in B, okay? Then comes the intersection. This is all X such that X is in A and X is in B. So to be in the intersection, you need to be in both A and in B. And finally, the union, this is all X such that X is in A or X is in B, okay? So to be in the union, you can be in A, this is fine, you can be in B. This is fine, you could be in both A and B. This is fine too. All of that is in the union. Let's suppose A is one, three, and four, and B is um, one and two, okay? Let's just compute for this short example all of these. Well, the union, we take all of this, we take everything in B, everything in A, sort of put it all in one set. And I could have listed one twice, as we know, that would have been fine. So this is X is in all of these. X is in the union provided X is in A or X is in B and we get one, two, three, four. Okay. The intersection is just what's common to both sets. In this case, it's just this one. And then the difference well, you start here and then you remove the elements that are in B. And so this would just be what's left, which is three and four. So here are these three set operations illustrated for this A and B. 
Here is a little bit more involved example, and it's great. We'll practice intersection, union, set difference, and also tie it to cross product and power set. So this is a wonderful example. A is given in roster method. B, you see, is in set builder notation. And perhaps before we begin, the easiest thing or the first best way to start is to just list the elements of B because then that will help me with the rest of this. So we want all integers such that x squared is less than 10. Well, this is definitely a finite set. This will be minus 3, minus 2, minus 1, 0, 1, 2, and 3. Okay? Just as a Sanity check, cardinality of A is four, cardinality of B is seven, okay? Now, A intersect B. Well, these are the elements that are common to both A and B. This is just one and three, okay? A union B, this will be a big set. We have everything that's in A, or we can also have everything in B. So we have minus three, minus two, minus one, zero, and two. I did not list one and three again, although I certainly could have. It wouldn't change the set. This has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine elements. A minus B, okay. We start with elements in A, and then we remove the ones that are in B. A has four elements. Now. Remove the ones that appear in B. All that's left is five and seven. B minus A, okay. Well, we're gonna have a larger set here. We start with everything in B and remove the ones that are in A. So we're left with minus two, mi minus three, minus two, minus one, zero, and two. Finally, we get a little bit more involved. Okay, this is a cross product, this is a power set, but the nice thing is we've already calculated this and this, so I just need to take the cross product. This will be ordered pairs, where the first entry comes from A intersect B, and the second entry comes from A minus B. Just thinking about cardinality, we will have two times two elements here. And this is, well, we have one five, we have three five, and then we have um, one seven and three seven. Okay, this is A intersect B cross A minus B. Now finally, and this goes back to the last lesson, we want the power set of A intersect B. This is the set of all subsets of this. This has two elements. This one will have two squared elements. We should see four things. And we can list a power set by, I always go in order of, of cardinality of the subset. So we have the empty set, which is a subset of every set. And then we have the singletons. And then, well, there's only one two element subset of A intersect B. It is all of A intersect B, okay. So I really like this example because we got to practice not only the new operations, but some things we have also discussed.